Hello and welcome to another episode of Marketed Not Live, the podcast for marketers who are looking to their own community to find out what's working now and, importantly, what's around the corner. In every episode, particularly this one, we'll bring you a guest to talk about a specific marketing topic that will help you broaden your horizons. So, you know, if you're into social media, you can learn about all things SEO, branding, customer experience funnels, the lot, just by listening to your friends. Uh, we'll have the speakers from last year's event and this year's Marketed Live and others. And of course, the event itself takes place on Tuesday, the 25th of September 28th at the magnificent Nottingham Contemporary. Uh, we'll also have you with us, our wonderful community of attendees and wannabe attendees, because, you know, your experience is just as valid as anyone else's. If you'd like to be on the podcast, all you've got to do is just drop us a line at hey at Marketed Live. This show is sponsored by Podcast Websites, the industry-leading platform for creating a world-class audio marketing channel for yourself or your clients. Audio marketing delivers one of the highest engagement rates of any marketing channel, and according to Edison Research, over 75% of the people who listen to podcasts take action based on the host simply asking them to do something, and why would you not want that to happen? Now, the team at Podcast Websites, who, by the way, are based right here in the UK, they're helping us to bring this podcast to life. So a huge thank you to them for making this happen. And if you're thinking about starting a podcast for you or maybe your clients, check out podcastwebsites.com and see what they have to offer. Because right now, listeners to the podcast and Marketed Live ticket holders can get 25% off membership for life, as long as they do that, by the 31st of October 2018. So without further ado, let's just get on with the show. Today, I am with my very good friend, Paul Chapman. Hello, sir. How Hello. Are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us on Marketed Not Live. Um, you've been part of this setup for, uh, well, since, since the beginning, just being involved, as are many people. Um, so can you maybe just start off by uh, telling people who are listening or watching who you are, what it is that you do, um, and, well, anything of interest, really. Yeah, I can promise, promise uh, nothing of interest. Uh, I'm Paul. I'm, I'm a marketing strategist. Um, I wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago called The Game Changers. Uh, that did very well indeed. Uh, I'm a speaker. Um, but in essence, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a business owner and a marketing geek. You know, I uh, spend much of my time um, with businesses working out their plan, you know, working out their, their strategy um, above all else, you know, rather than sort of getting bogged down into particular tactics and that sort of thing. You know, I work with people like Tim Elliott as well, guys that, um, you know, we'll get together and we'll, we'll look at the route forward. I think, you know, we have almost an embarrassment of riches at the moment. I think, you know, marketing is at, uh, at one level has never been easier. It's never been kind of chim chimper cheaper more simple uh to get customers in but because we've got so many options that's given us that that availability but actually it's actually muddied the waters a lot as well uh, so a big part of what i do is um is hanging around with other businesses and just kind of helping them to find their route forward as you say it's a very busy landscape that that we live in so talk us through a little bit about how you help a business maybe get that get that clarity if they if they come to you and they say right okay well we need to we need to do something better but we don't know what it is um what are the sort of things that you try and pick out from their uh story or their business that will help you identify where they need to go yeah but i think you've got to start with what's actually genuinely important to them and i don't think I mean, particularly business owners, I, you know, I have, perhaps this is a wrong say, I've got no passion for running a business. I don't love running a business. I love running a business because of what it allows me to do. And I think, you know, a lot of the people that will speak to have almost forgotten that the business is just a tool. It's just a way to get to something else, a lifestyle, that sort of thing. So you've got to start by pulling out what is really important. What do they actually want to happen? What do they want to spend their time doing? And then from there, you work, you work it back and think, well, okay, these are the set of actions. You know, this is what you need to charge that. This is, you know, who, these are, therefore, who are the people that will pay that? How do you then go about it? And I think, you know, a big problem, I think, with the marketing industry, a, a, a lot, particularly the marketing industry, is that everyone is so focused on tactics. Everyone is into, well, you should be doing Facebook ads, you should be doing this, this, this. All of the things are useful, all of them are valid, all of them can play a part in it. But if you haven't got that overall plan of what you're trying to achieve, you may as well not do it because you'll just do it kind of piecemeal. And that's, you know, that's kind of really where the starting point is for me is to look, you know, what is really important to you? Where, where do you want to take the business? Because that will allow X and what is that thing? 
I then just work back and think, well, look, look, here is a set of plans. Here's some actions to do that. This is why we think that's a good idea because it worked here, 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 and here. Here's what we'd expect to happen. But let's go and do it. Let's go and run it through. And, you know, it's really important, I think, for all of us to actually see stuff through. Even if you think your campaign is bombing, the only way you'll work out if it is right, if it is working, and learn anything from it is by seeing it through to the end. And I think it's impossible to see it through to the end. In truth, it's impossible to start if you haven't got a proper plan, a proper street strategic look at, I'm trying to do this to achieve this. Here are my set the steps to go about that. We, we live in a very busy society, I guess, and people are always trying to find what to do next, what to do next. And I think it's really interesting what you're saying about you know tactics. And I, I can just imagine that it's hard in a world where everyone's an entrepreneur and everyone's you know hustling and all this kind of stuff which i'm not a huge fan of myself they can't see the wood for the trees and so they do just do things in in a fairly random way is the uh, like you say is the amount of options that are available contributing to that kind of haze massively absolutely so i mean great great kind of examples they're a company we won't say who and they've been banging away on email newsletters. They've been banging away on Twitter for months and months and months. And they're getting absolutely nowhere. You know, go and have a conversation. It transpires that they have got everything they need. They, they have 200 people in the UK that they need to target. They've got names, addresses, emails, everything they need, phone numbers for those people. And they're doing nothing to talk to those people. They're just smashing away because someone's told them that Twitter's a good idea. And you know, it's not about not doing stuff. It's about thinking, well, look, the only point of marketing is to get something change you need, you, something needs to happen you need some engagement you need something to notice people are not thinking what is the absolute best thing that you can do to make that happen and i think people almost oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit unfair to say it, but i think people almost hide behind it and they'll they'll cl- you know they'll clack away on on twitter or facebook and they almost kind of kid themselves they're doing something useful or actually this company you know 200 letters and some phone calls solves the problem and it is, you know, a lot of what we'll do is actually look at what's there, what's useful. Let's create what we think is the thing that is most likely to work. Not the easiest, not the quickest, what's most likely to work. And you end up with, you know, four or five steps as every campaign should be. So we end up with a, a really good bit of direct mail. That direct mail sent them back to a website. We then tracked who went to that website so we could prioritize who should we speak to next. And from that point, you can then follow up with, you know, emails, whatever it is. But you're doing real stuff. You're doing stuff to people rather than just kind of out to the masses. And I think, you know, half the problem is because, you know, kind of marketing blokes, people have just kind of said, oh, this, you could do this, you could do this, look at this new shiny thing. And people get carried away. Right, and yeah, it's, yeah. It's great that people engage, and I think if you're not engaging with it, then you are going to miss a trick. But don't forget the old stuff, if you like. What is most likely to work? It's like, you know, a lot of what I do with the people, you know, finding new customers, I, I get on the phones. And I get on the phones. Well, for two reasons, really. One, it's better. I'm better on the phone. I enjoy it more. Is this? Are you talking about how you get clients? Yeah, so for okay. me to go and get a customer, I, I, I will find an excuse to pick up the phone. I will find an excuse to go and have coffee with someone. And all the other things kind of play a part in that. But, you know, when you pick up the phone, you're more likely to find out if they want to do something or not. And I don't mind if they don't, but I don't want to spend lots and lots of time in it. And you can, you know, people aren't in that space. You know, people aren't getting thousands of phone calls a day. You know, so, yeah, I get hundreds and hundreds of emails today. So actually trying to write an email, which is good enough, and uh, that sound like an idiot. I think we have quite a good email campaign. We have, we have good kind of, you know, good kind of structure to it. We, have, we use good headlines that we learn a lot from, you know, social. We learn a lot from, you know, Google and YouTube. So we know, you know, things like Answer the Public as well. I don't know if you guys know mm. Answer the Public. Oh, it's, I know it's, it. It's uh, a yeah, great tool for finding what people are searching for. So you, you can create good emails based on facts of what people are asking, and you can... You know, start to solve those questions. But actually, for me, and maybe it's because I do everything else badly, nothing is more powerful than picking up the phone and just saying, look, hey, Paul, this is what I do. I do it for people like this. That's why I'm calling you. You may have no interest in it at all, but at the moment, I just want you to know I exist. Let me know. And, and how, how, are you fa- how are you finding that? Because one of the questions I was going to ask you is, you know, th- the Marketed Live 2018 has a theme of the future. And what I find quite paradoxical is the interest that I see in what we w- may have seen as, as not particularly future-y uh, uh, channels like phone call, yeah. like letters, uh, like gift boxes. And I know that you know, you've know you spoken about these sorts of things um, at, at your event before, um, but where, where do you think the future lies with those sort of more analog channels? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's important to talk about the integration of it all. 
I think you know that you know each thing works very well with other stuff. You know, I can and I have just cold called, but actually, if I you know you, 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 what I'm trying to do is I know I know calling works. Not, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. I know calling works, so I now have to work out what's the best thing I can do to make sure that call works. And as part of that, I will send stuff in advance. I will put stuff in their way in advance. So actually, by the time my call comes through, it isn't a cold call anymore. And I'm, you know, I'm following up on a thing, or I'm suggesting something, or I've got someone to introduce us. So actually, that's a part of it. So it's sort of softening that yeah. introduction, introductory call in a, in a way. So, so in terms of that particular journey, because we had we had Tim Elliott on uh, like uh, in, in a previous right. podcast episode talking about journeys, um, and you've mentioned about you know having five five steps. Where does that call sit in those in those steps? Is it? Is, it's obviously not first because you've said it's not first. What about? Is it second? Is it? Does it depend? What sort of activities yeah, I, are you doing to get I, I, to that point? It, it, it depends what it is. I think you know it can be first, and I think you know. I, I mean, people have done it to me. I've done it to other people. You just pick up the phone and just kind of say, "Look, this is me. This is what I do." I've no idea if it's interest, but I was going to write an email. I thought, I'll pick up the phone and give you a shout. Right. And I think that can work. I think, you know, to do it sustainably, because that's what we all want from Martin. We want this, you know, we want rep replicable, is a word, probably. We'll go with it. Cool. Replicable <laughs> stuff. And actually, think, actually, I want to get to the page where I know I'll send 10 letters out. And I might then, depending, I might then, you know, connect on LinkedIn. That might even happen first because they, they kind of know the name a little bit there. Yeah. I'll tend some letters or a box or, you know, we, uh, my old boss used to call it kind of a shock and awe package, something that really stops them in their tracks. And we've done magnifying glasses and chocolate and checks and we've done all sorts of stuff there because something just has to stop them long enough to see my name or to see a thing. And then depending on, on kind of who it's going to, I might then, um, I might then pick up the phone straight away and say, look, just wanted to see if it had got there. Blah, 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 this is what I do. Um, it may well be if it's slightly more tricky contact where they are kind of busier in a, in a slightly different world. I might follow them up with a, you know, an email. Hey, Paul, hope you got the box. Um, you know, just had this case study across my desk. Thought this might be useful. Put a bit more meat on the bones. Talk mm -hmm. about what I do and why. And then I might even kind of get, then go on to, you know, a, a call perhaps after that, whether it is to check that stuff has got through. Or if it's a bit further down the line, I might kind of, you know, engineer a way that I can be near them so book some meetings near them and then pick up the phone if I am and say look I'm going to be you know not too far away should we put a face to a name but I know that every market is busy every platform is busy I look at my kind of my social feeds now and it's just stuff it's just stuff actually trying to cut through there is difficult it's not impossible and it's still such a powerful tool but I'm trying to get into a place where I have their consciousness and no one else's consciousness yeah and that's why I want to get the phone in. You know, uh, the thing I sell most of all is coffee. I go and have <laughs> cups of coffee with people, and I will engineer anything I can do to go and have that cup of coffee. Because that works for you, and you yeah. you, you know that. Um, the thing that sort of stands out from what, you've, what you're saying, a particular bit about social, is that certainly when I talk to people about how they should use social media more effectively and, and thinking about how users use it. You know, you've got this news feed, which is, yeah. as you say, incredibly busy. And one of the things we're all trying to do is sort of vie for attention and you're trying to, to arrest people in their, in their tracks and, and get them to pause what they're doing or even scroll slightly slower than what they would do before to pay attention to your thing. And it seems as though that's really what you're doing with a box or an email or, or, or you know, to, to, to be able to kind of say, well, when you get the phone call that they remember yeah. you or they actually want to to take yeah. it i think you've got to get attention first something has to happen in their world to stop them in their tracks and there are you know i mean that that can be on social the brilliant thing about social is that you've got the ability to target just minutely to, you know you can find the right people and that's where you know you know for people like yourself you know you guys know this stuff brilliantly and you can go well look it's that 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 there and there's there are plenty plenty of reasons why actually social is the perfect starting point because that captures their attention which then you know leads to engagement and then you can roll it on from there you know, it just so happens that we're with the, with the clients that i tend to target going direct gives us a quicker cleaner and often um i suppose a more direct route in because they're probably not it's not I don't know, it's not spending the time on social that's not true they are but that's not it's going to be harder to grab their attention because they're not looking in that world. Yeah, and it does. De you're right. It does depend on their market. If they are uh, someone who who perhaps uses Facebook but uses it in the evening when they're a bit bored, mm. they're talking to their family, um, and that's when they use it, and they're not on it every day. 
and maybe they use LinkedIn LinkedIn a bit more, but maybe they don't have the time to be spend messing around on, on LinkedIn or any of it really because they're busy people, they're looking to manage their business, they're trying to service their clients. That might not be the format for them and it might take you longer, I guess, to uh, to, to find them or to get in touch with them or to, to even let them pay attention to you. Whereas if they are, you know, if they're on the phone every five minutes talking to their customers and clients, if that's how they do business, all you're doing is thinking about how they operate and delivering something to them in a format that they prefer, I guess. Yeah, and that's it. And again, it, it all starts with attention. The first thing you've got to do is get someone's attention because, you know, I don't know, five years ago, it was much more smash and grab. You could just you could just spend a bit of money somewhere and people would come. Whereas now everyone, because, of, you know, marketing is, you know, brilliantly, it's become easier, more accessible, if that's the right word, but, you know, it's easier for people to get good at it. That just makes it really, really busy. And, you know, if you think about, you know, if, if, if there's a tension in a crowd, if I'm in a crowded room, I don't know where I'm going with this, if I'm in a crowded room and I just hold up a post-it note and everyone else is holding up a post-it note, it's really difficult for, that, for, the, for the person I want to get there. If I just stride straight up and say, hi, I'm Paul, do you want to chat? Mm. You know, that's what's happening in, in, in kind of my, you know, that part of the marketing world. So actually, going direct tends to be for the right people, the right route there. But, you know, it's the same with, you know, it's, it's the same with social. Doing the right thing on social is end is why you have to have a plan because if people are on social trying to sell stuff, it becomes really difficult because everyone's into that noise. Whereas what you can do brilliantly with social is target people and put the right stuff in front of the right people. So actually, you know, we, you know, we work with um, um, kind of psychotherapist stuff and they work with you know, a lot of kind of stressed executives and that sort of thing. And the route that we'll go in on is something like, you know, have your golf club sat in the um, garage this year? You know, yeah, golf, you know, and, that, and that's the thing. We're not trying to sell them the stuff. We're trying to get the attention. Because if there is, you know, a guy there, and we, go, we, and we know the targets, we know they are kind of know, executive types, you know, and this one just happens for, you know, men between this age and this age, da, 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 da. If we go and talk to them about their mental health, it might trigger, but actually we're trying to more get their attention. So, we, you know, we're talking about bikes. We're talking about... Um, uh, you know, so you know, golf clubs. You know, we did something with a, with a, a financial advisor, and they were forever talking about pensions, and no one cared. No one has mm. ever woken up and gone, "God, I'd love a pension." <laughs> um, but they get once you get into the world, and again, this is why you, it's so important to have a plan. You get into the target market. What we worked out is that the target market were people that love new tech, SpaceX, Tesla, all that kind of world. Right. So that's the route you go in because you get attention. That you know, you can't get attention talking about pensions. You can get attention talking about why Tesla's burst into flames. You know, and then, yeah. and, and, and then we just rec- we effectively had to do some of the suspension, but we equated that back to financial services thing, blah, 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 blah. But you've got their attention and you've got to get them there in the first place. And that's where, again, bang on about it forever. That's where you have to have this plan of working out, well, what do I really want to do? What's my first step in this? And what is the best possible thing that I can do that will make that happen? So if someone feels as though they've been throwing mud at the wall and hoping that it sticks and, and they're really not getting anywhere with, with any of that kind of stuff. Uh, and they're feeling a bit like, right, that's something needs to change. What is the, the first thing that somebody should, should do? What's the easiest thing someone can do to kind of like pause and go, right, let's have a proper look at this? Yeah, I mean, assuming they know what they're trying to achieve, pretty much every case I see, people aren't clear enough about their target market, who they are, what's important to them, what they think about the problem, how they feel, what the, what is the what is the problem that, how do they see the problem that you're trying to fix? So I think that's often it. If they're just chucking stuff at a wall, they haven't got a target market, or they ha- or, or they don't know who they are, they don't know where they are. And I think you know that's that's the thing. You know, finding out more about that target market because once you've got that, you can then work back and think, well, okay, what do we know about? This? What if you don't know your target market? What if you know, because you, you, I ask people this, and you say, "Well, who can buy your product? Who do you want to buy your product?" And they go, "Well, everybody." Yeah. You know, how do you get? How do you overcome that? How do you? I mean, is it a case of niching? Is it a case of just pick one? You know, how, yeah, how do you yeah, deal with that? Yeah. A, a, a bit of all, a bit of all, and everything. Really, I think you know, without knowing your target market, I think it is really, really difficult because you know, unless your first name is Shake and you're sat on an enormous pile of cash, you're just going to spend money and you're just going to spend energy and you're going to get frustrated with it. I think. Um, for lots of people, you pick it. You know, I know again. I, I, just, as in, just p- just yeah, pick yeah. one. Or oh, one of the great things about running a business, and we've like any kind of marketing, really, I suppose, is that you get to choose. You know, it is. You know, there are plenty of people out there that will pay a thousand pounds an hour, and there are plenty of people that pay ten pounds an hour. You just pick. You know, we just when I was when I first started in business, I did some stuff with a mortgage advisor, 
and it fascinated me because I was a geek, still am. <laughs> fascinated me that actually the 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 work to do a mortgage on a million pound house is exactly the same ish to do the work on a hundred thousand pound house, but the payout was like ten times higher. Well, why don't you just mm. focus on those? Why don't you just target those? So I think you know the, uh, choice is really important here, and, and it's not all, always about you know charging high prices. That's not what I'm kind of getting at here. But it is work out who you really want. You know what do you want to earn? How much time do you want to put into it? Who's going to do that? Do I want to do? I can't, I can't do the math. A hundred mortgages at ten pounds, or ten mortgages at hundred pounds. Right. Yeah. And then think, well, look, what might I know about these people? Mm. And you know, sadly or not sadly, marketing is really a series of tests. What's working? What isn't? You get clear on who you think your best possible guess, kind of. Right, I think it's those people. What do I think is the best thing that would do those people? What's my routine? What do we know about them? You know, can I go to you know CEOs of companies bashing over email? Well, look, probably not. It's not impossible. So it comes back round to thinking about who you're talking to. Um, those of you who listen to the podcast can't appreciate this, but Paul's a bit of a snappy dresser. Uh, if you're watching, you would be able to, to see this. It always looks like turned out. It's always at least got a waistcoat on. Um, I just don't iron shirts do you, very well. <laughs> do, do you, just out of interest, um, at the risk of this becoming like, you know, loose women, which it could, it could you know, degenerate into, let's face it. <laughs> uh, uh, do, do, you, do you consciously think about, well, if I'm going to visit if I want to visit like CEOs and high power clients or people that are willing to spend money, I need to dress for that. I need to match what, you know, what their expectation is. You know, you don't want to be like a Gary Vee in your, your, your uh, t-shirt and trainers, even though he's uh, super successful. Yeah. Do, do you think about that? Is that important? Um, well, I, I, mean, look, I mean, I I'm an old mod, you know, Lambretta in the garage and, you know, nice tailor things. I was the guy, um, I was the weirdo. Uh, when I was in my going out phase, I was a guy that would be turning up clubbing in suits and, uh, you know, Goodness. Sk skinny ties and pointed shoes. and In a club? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lead balloon territory, really. Is. But, <laughs> um, but no, I, I think there is there is stuff at play here. I mean, again, there's a brilliant example. It's an example I use a lot. There's a, um, I was up at an event in, uh, in Manchester and this guy came up to me. And he had his trousers on back to front, really, which again is just like a, a, a feat of engineering, really. Like crisscross. <laughs> yes, Daddy Mac will make you. <laughs> no, okay, leave that. Um, it's basically, I kind of didn't, half his face was shaved. It, bless him, he looked like a real mess. And he handed his card to me. His card was a piece of paper. It wasn't even laminated. It was wrapped in sellotape. And on the <laughs> card it said that the um, yeah the, I forget what I said, the Northwest Premier Wealth Creator. Now I know that has to mean. Mm. I probably can't swear. You can swear on this. Really? We'll just put the little e symbol next oh, okay. to it on the podcast. I think we just have to declare it. I don't know okay. how it works yet. I know. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't swear in case uh, my mum watches it, uh, which I think is probably unlikely. Uh, but I know that has to be bullshit. It has to be because bless his heart, he can't put his trousers on properly. He can't afford a business card. Do you know what I mean? And I think right. you know, it is it is part of it. People, if you particularly if you want to end up in a higher market. You've got to look like you know what you're talking about. Now, you know, again, there's, a, there's, a, there's another finance here, the financial advisor that you know, I know locally that purports to be a guy that deals with high-end clients, but everything about him looks cheap. And I don't, and right. again, I don't mm -hmm. want to say it out loud because that makes me sound like an idiot, but if you're watching this and you say it, you, you probably know I'm an idiot now. But realistically, if he turns up to a, new, a meeting in a kind of a battered old suit and a, you know, a, a knackered old Vauxhall Nova, which I'm sure are lovely cars, and he, he is there to help people create wealth, if you can't do it for yourself, then it's, you can't buy You're not credible, that. right? I can't believe that this guy in Manchester is the Northwest Premier Wealth Creator because he's got no money. I, again, I, I feel like an arse saying it, but you know, if he turns up in a you know, an, a, you know, nice suit, a pair of jeans, a shirt, you know, shoot, you know, decent shoes, at least I can buy into it. At least I kind of the credibility here. And again, you see this across everybody's marketing. They purport to be one thing, but actually, you look at it, and none of their marketing is about or for their target mm. market. The testimonials aren't from people like the people that you want to get to. You know, the imagery is not the right imagery for the people you want to get to. And again, so yeah, I mean, I don't. I, yeah, I'm, sadly, this is how I dress. This is yeah, basically these, these are my pajamas. <laughs> this, is, this is just how it's just a zip at yeah, the back. Basically, just it's, take, it's, yeah, it's just a very well tailored onesie. Um, so I mean, I like to dress well. You know, I have I have two kids, which means I spend most of my life kind of covered in kid stuff. Stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, Goo. So that, but uh, you know, I, I think kind of. To expand the question, you have to look credible 
to the people that you want to work with. Now, you know, similarly, as a guy I know very well he has a beautiful Aston Martin as one of his cars, but he won't go to client meetings in the Aston Martin because he doesn't want to look too flash. I get it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, it's, it's a weird thing. It may even be a kind of a sad indictment on our society, but all the choice now is with the customer because there are, t- there are too many marketing guys, there are too many accountants, too many financial advisors, too many plumbers, too many everything. So actually, if this person doesn't look right, mm. it's another thing that consciously or subconsciously kind of ticks off in the mind, well, look, probably not for me. You know, I'm looking for a financial advisor, someone to help me with my money. This guy can't afford two shoes. Well, I'm so, sorry for him, but... So it's also about, I guess, being authentic enough that, you know, you have to be believable. So if it was... Uh, in an Aston Martin or, yeah, or if he yeah. was in a, a, a BMW Mercedes yeah. or whatever that was maybe a bit more matching, yeah. he would still have to be believable. So it's about that kind of, um, again, that, that getting that match right in terms yeah. of picking who your target audience needs to be, thinking about who they are and delivering, well, I'll call it content, even if yeah, that's you on a yeah. telephone call to, yeah. to, to make sure that, that that all feels right. And people will look... You know, like five, ten years ago, you could just turn up and just be anyone. Whereas now, if you know that there is, you know, someone's coming, you know, if I'm going to go to a meeting, I'm certain someone looks at my LinkedIn profile. Someone probably looks right. at my face. They, they, you know, yeah. they hunt this stuff out. Again, I mean, two things here. One, they hunt this stuff out, so they go and look at it. So if my LinkedIn profile isn't very good, if I haven't got lots of recommendations, if I, excuse me, if I, you know, haven't put any content out there, you know, it's probably not going to put them off. But actually, it doesn't help me, you know. But if they, you know, if they do check me out, actually, this guy wrote, you know, he's he's written a bestseller. Oh yeah, he was on this, you know, this stage in front of a thousand people. Oh, he's done this. Oh, he's done that. It just helps. Almost, it's like, um, as I call it, almost like marketing by osmosis. Mm-hmm. There, there are so many of me's out there that people are just looking for that. They, they want reassurance or and that's and this is where I think your social is 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 brilliant. Is that actually you can cement your image. If that's the right phrase, you, see, you can when people look. All I think they need to see is actually, yeah, okay, this guy is worth listening to. So how important is that other stuff then? So, you know, you mentioned speaking because you do a lot of speaking. You've written a best-selling book. Um, you've got your own event, Game Changers Live, which was awesome, by the way, um, and fellow Nottingham event, oh, yes. of course. Um, how, how important is, is that sort of stuff? Because I, I see a lot of people, you know, who, for example, say, I do this and I do this and I do this. Is it all part of that osmosis that you're talking about where people can check you out and see that you're credible and actually, well, yeah, I do want to work with him because of these are the things that, that he does. Is that important or is it just part of that supporting yeah, mechanism? I, I think it all helps. Again, I come back to the fact that, you know, there is an enormous amount of choice, you know, and it's I, I, it's almost a bit like, um, you know, three or four or five years ago, lots of people do, kind of doing social media and you'd look at them and think, well, okay, you've got no social media presence. You know, they, they, they purport to be a social media expert, but yet they've got no... You know, they've got three followers. Or you think, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. And it's, I, I guess a bit of it is... It's um, like me yeah. and my Instagram account. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's quality. Quality, it's quality not quantity. Yeah. And again, and, uh, but by the same token, you'll see people that go the other way that have, you know, 100,000 here, 100,000 there. And, they, you know, you can't be good at them all. Yeah. You know, be good at one thing and do it. But I think, in answer to your question, yes, I think it makes a difference. I think, you know, because, as I keep saying, the choice is with the customer, you know, I don't know. I probably, you know ask, 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 ask some of my customers if you can find one. Um, <laughs> yeah, might go, do that. Yeah, just kind of hunt down. But I think if I'm looking for someone, I think, well, I've got, I've got three marketing guys here, and this one, you know, not much going on. And you know, this one, I did a good article. And this one, oh, actually, this guy was the guy that wrote the book on marketing for businesses. Even yeah. though, you know, the miss of being, I don't put it, it's not a difficult thing to do. Anyone can write a book. It's become, you know, we create space and that's become a lot easier to, you know, could actually physically do it. But, you know, here's a guy that, oh, there is Paul on stage in front of a thousand people at, you know, the ICC mm. in Birmingham. You know, there, you know, Paul has written a book that has a best selling thing next to it. Paul has put on his own event. Paul is creating content. After a while, you almost think, well, you, you know, it's, he's got to sort of know what he's doing. He's got to kind of be, a, at least be in the, you know, the ballpark of having some kind of credibility. And because there is so much choice there, my belief is, and you know, I guess it'll be borne out in time, is that if someone's choosing between someone that um, hasn't done that stuff, but is a marketing guy, and someone that's a marketing guy and has done that stuff, I believe it, you know, it, it has to chip in. It has to kind of chip in there. Excellent. Okay, well, um, look, I've got some quick fire questions for you. I say quick fire. Excellent. They've not been quick fire yet. No, but, sorry. Um, no, no, I, no, like I, didn't, I didn't mean oh, you. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't mean you. I mean, in all the previous episodes, they've not been quick fire, really. Um, but, uh, okay, so first, first question would be, 
um, you know, you were there at Marketed Live last year. Um, what did you most enjoy about about that event? Was there any particular speaker that you got something from that maybe you weren't expecting? What was what was your highlight? Do you know, what? I loved it. I mean, I, I, I sort of have to say it. Oh, you I do, loved it. Um, <laughs> Just, I mean, there, there were two things for me. One, it was the people there. Just, you know, right, I yeah. love hanging out with just good people, smart people. You know, I don't know. It's almost an identifying against the way I get them into more trouble. People that come to these events are of a, I don't want to say different level. I'm not quite sure the right way to say it, but they are a kind of a, th- a level of thought above those that won't come out. Yeah, I'm happy to say that. I think they are, absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, so that part of it, but the one, and again, forgive me, the lady, I've forgotten her name, the lady, who was the lady that spoke about SEO? Dawn Anderson. Jaw dropping. Utterly jaw Because I think I know a bit about the world. I mean, clearly not really. But just that knowledge and that experience and that stuff that I hadn't even considered, I hadn't even thought about. And, you know, to learn about what is actually happening, what Google is actually doing behind the scenes was incredible. And it, you know, again, sorry, Rach. That's all right. I don't uh, mind you switching uh, my mic. It's fine. Uh, We're Rugby friends. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I... You can't find that. No, I, I can't think of anywhere else I'd have gone to get that knowledge. Right, I don't, you know, yeah, she's yeah. not. You know, she's not like a bookable. But I can't just kind of happen across her. In a, and you wouldn't go to an SEO conference necessarily. Oh, no, no, I guess, not in a heartbeat because it, it, I'm not it's, it's too focused. It is. It's too yeah. focused, and it's you know, it's it's relevant. But yeah, I know. I just wouldn't go. Yeah, there. I mean, I if if you're an SEO person, obviously you would go yes, to an yeah, SEO yeah, conference. Yeah, I'm going to say that, but yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 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 nothing wrong with it. But you know, the beauty of it is that there were all. I'm in marketing. That's what I do. It's what I love. It's what I kind of a real kind of passion for. And to hear real genuine experts that are in the kind of minutiae of the stuff that's happening it was just brilliant and it just it feels like it puts me way ahead of the crowd both from a kind of a consultancy point of view that i Mm. now know this stuff exists you know that you can do this and to be able to explain how google looked at different terms at different times and different you know times of the year times of the day like uh, just mind-blowing and it was i love it when you go to event and you just go and there's a good kind of push on that talk i just thought I didn't, I didn't even think this was possible. And again, it's one of the things, now you know it, you think, I get it. The and stuff it, to yeah, do, yeah, oh, yeah. So useful, but so yeah, Dawn was an absolute, yeah, superstar. So uh, who are you looking forward to this year of the ones that, that you know about? Uh, Holly, um, very looking forward to seeing Holly. Um, I know Holly from, I mean, ages and ages and ages ago, and I know she's at the Beano now, and I, I think that's a fascinating thing, kind of that, that's almost a difficult market because kind of child engagement kind of thing. I don't know if that's the right thing to say, but, you know, kind of being head of engagement at, um, at being, uh, yeah, I think that will be absolutely fascinating to kind of see what they do, how they do it. Because these are, I think, yeah, that's the different thing. You forget these are big players, big, mm. serious players with big, serious budgets that have lots to lose and lots to gain. And actually kind of to hear literally from the horse's mouth, what are they doing about it? We, it, we said earlier on today, you know, it is about engagement. You know, that's the only point of your marketing. You've got to engage. And whether that is clicks, opens, yeah, likes, watches, pick up phones and other stuff. That's what it's about. And, and yeah, I think yeah, to hear that, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Excellent. I'm really pleased that you're coming along. Um, thank you ever so much. It's a pleasure. Um, useful, yeah. Tell us where people can find you online or if they want to kind of get involved in this conversation with you in a bit more detail. Great. Well, I'm on, on marketingjumpleads.com is me. Uh, I'm also on timandpaul.com, timandpaul.co.uk. Uh, we're there as well, um, which is kind of something new I'm doing with a, a chap called Tim Elliott. I don't know if you know him. Who he? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's strange, man. Lovely head. Really yeah, nice head. Yeah, shiny. Um, but, but yeah, but I'm on there. I, obviously on a bit of Facebook as well, but yeah, um, yeah just, just around really. So um, yeah, and if I can help, uh, if any questions I can do, just shout. But uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, it, fascinating to talk to you as ever. Thank you Pleasure so much. Well, that's all for this episode of Marketed Not Live. If you've enjoyed today's show, obviously you have. Please leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice and help us spread the word about this and also about Marketing Live 2018. Remember, our event brings together experts from all marketing disciplines. So if marketing is your thing, then we need to see you there. Just visit marketed.live for all info on speakers, travel options, accommodation, and whilst you're there, read the blog posts from your fellow attendees and speakers. We'll see you very soon.